Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're taking a look from another personal game of mine. In this one I'm going to be playing with the white pieces against Brian Taylor. He's an 1800 from San Antonio, a very strong player here and he loves to play Nidorf as black, he likes to play King's Gambit as white. Well, lucky for me, I'm playing with the white pieces. Let's see how this goes. This is in the round 4 tournament of the San Antonio Chess Club uh, 2022. I have to win this one to uh, become club champion. Let's see how I do. We start off with e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight attacks the pawn, knight defends the pawn, and pawn to a6. Here we go. The knight of begins. And I've played quite a few games with Brian in these lines, and, well, the game always is pretty uh, crazy. So here I went ahead and played an idea I don't play too often, but I, I like to play it every once in a while. Uh, pa this pawn moved to h3. There's not too much theory to know about this. And, well, if, if it's good enough for Fisher, it should be good enough for me. This idea is kind of based off the idea of playing a Scheveningen or the Kiri's attack. For instance, this is done to, to reduce my amount of study time. After this knight c3 e6 gets played, g4 is one of the main moves here to get a strong attack. And it's very simple. I don't really think I've ever studied lines on it. You just kind of push your pawns forward, and then you just attack. On um, You'll cast a queen side like an English attack, but just push your king side pawns. What's to know, right? So the idea is very similar to this, and that's why I, I've adopted it rather than going for some other lines too. I do know some hard cut lines, but this one's just a kind of easy one I play every once in a while. After a6, you play the pawn move to h3, again to play g4, because, well, it's going to be looking like the same kind of plan. And that's exactly what I do. But Brian does play one of the most challenging ways against this. He plays pawn to e5. And here, well, there's two places to move the knight. You can go to b3 or to e2. The best move for white is typically to go to e2 here. And he plays pawn to h5. He does not want to deal with these g4 ideas. All right, that's okay. One of the bad things about this h5 move is that it gives control over to g5. And, well, that's where my bishop goes. Bishop g5, bishop e7. And, well, I could castle kingside, but I'm going to go ahead and castle queenside. I'd like to make these games pretty crazy. Especially because, well, I need to get a win here to win the club championship. Queen d2 got played. Knight to b to d7. Pretty typical stuff right here. And here, I went ahead and played an interesting idea here, knight to g3. And I will challenge you, push pause if you can, what is the idea behind knight g3? It looks like a very simple move, but the idea is actually pretty cool here. All right, were you able to figure it out? The idea here for the knight is actually to go to d5. What? That's a pretty deep move. Well, it's pretty deep if you don't really understand what you're doing here. Remember, whenever you're playing in these Sicilians, particularly this one, the d5 square is where the knight wants to get to. Well, how do you get your knight all the way over there? Well, there is a, quite a few ways to get over there, but the idea was to play, hopefully play knight f5, knight e3, or d5. Or another way is knight f1, e3, d5. And I assumed he was going to go ahead and play pawn g6, which, you know, a quick idea is to play f5 right here. So half points if you do see this idea of knight f5. But you assume your opponent plays the best move. So he did play pawn g6. And I want to get my knight to f1, e3, d5, play on the light squares. And I went ahead and played bishop, e2, assuming he was going to play h4, which I was happy about because the knight goes to f1. So he actually kind of helps me out with this plan. At this point, I don't know if he realized, or before he played h4, I'm not sure if he realized that this was the plan. But either way, it was, it was going to be good for me. And uh, yeah, the knight's heading there. This is the weakest square. I want to put pressure on this backwards pawn. With that being said, I didn't realize how strong the dark square is going to be over here on the king side. And we're going to see how... Brian actually gets into a very good position. Well, he continues with another good move. Knight to c5 here, attacking the e4 pawn. And, well, it wasn't so easy for me to defend this pawn, at least allowing counterplay to happen. With that being said, I do play, oof, not the best move here, top three as far as Stockfish is concerned. And I played pawn to f3. Definitely a move I don't want to play here, especially, as I mentioned, well, the dark squares are getting weak. We're going to see how Brian takes advantage of that later. With that being said, some other moves that you can try here. I didn't like this one too much, was bishop takes on f6, bishop takes on f6, and here you can see this dark square bishop is getting plenty of strong here. And, yeah, I, I kind of want to cast a queen side, but I didn't like this bishop to g5 move too much. The knight does go to e3, but this pin's a bit annoying, but at least I do have pressure on this g6 square. And maybe that's what I was supposed to be doing in this, in this situation. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I do like it. So, yeah, maybe for next time. The other move that the computer was suggesting here was to play bishop to d3, and I just couldn't put myself to play this move. I mean, it makes sense here to defend the pawn, but I did not want to block the d-file, as I knew when I castled queenside, bishop takes f6 ideas are in the air, and if the bishop takes, the queen can take, as the rook will be defending it. So, 
eh, yeah, I just couldn't do it. With that being said, I played a move that wasn't the best, but it ends up working out later. So I went ahead and played pawn f3, and now a good move here by Brian. Bishop to e6, just keep developing, and knight to e3 here. Looks like I'm going to be winning this d5 square sooner or later. So Brian plays the very strong move of knight to h5 here. Now the reason why this is so good is because you can see, look at all these weak dark squares around here. And this is what I had missed in the game that was going to be so powerful. In fact, I believe Brian would actually get a better position in a few more moves. With that being said, I was a little bit better here. I'll go ahead and take, take. Now the d5 square is mine. And I went ahead and played knight to d5 right away. Apparently this was not the best, and I probably should have thought about just casting right away, or maybe even thought, thinking about playing bishop c4 to trade off this, these bishops, as these knights definitely are going to be better pieces than this light square bishop is. Well, I played knight to d5. It seemed like a good idea. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen to d8, and now I just went ahead and castled. And this is one of the frustrating, frustrating things whenever you play against these kind of openings. I mean, everything looks so good for white here. I've got my king safe. Um, I've got a backwards pawn I can play against. I got a good knight on d5. But these knights are actually better than this bishop. And just because this d6 pawn is here does not make it such a big weakness. And that's what just, you know, as a positional player, I just don't like this because all the rules say it should be bad. But the knight dwarf is so dyna dynamic and crazy that even though there are positional weaknesses, you can create a even position just by all the counterplay you have with the imbalances in the game. All right, an another nice move here for Brian. Knight to e6, and look, f4 square, d4 square. These knights are proving to be a better piece than this bishop is. Well, they say you should always play king b1 when you castle queenside in Sicilians. I agree. King b1 got played. Rook to c8. And here I went ahead and played rook h to e1 here. The idea is that, well, knight g3 is probably coming soon, and I didn't want to get my rook trapped in the game because bishop f1 is most likely what I'll be doing. So we played knight to f4 and i played bishop to f1 and apparently again this was a mistake why is this a mistake well looking at this position we're going to be getting good knight versus bad bishop how does that happen well here in the game the computer suggests just play knight e3 here and hopefully he'll take this bad bishop and then it'd be knight versus knight now again my my pawn structure is superior to his but with that being said because of the bad piece i get left with it doesn't matter so check it out after bishop f1, knight takes, queen takes, rook c6 just guards the pawn. And now you see that this knight is so much better than this bishop, either going to f4 or to g3. But definitely f4 looks like a better square because it's going to be putting pressure on this backwards pawn on g2. All right. Well, if I didn't bring my bishop out now, I wasn't going to get him out later on. So I played bishop c4, threatening a little checkmate here on f7. Of course, I know he's not going to miss this. He went ahead and played queen c7, a good move. I really thought he was just going to castle kingside here, which I think was best, but eh, what are you going to do? Queen c7. I, I, I harass uh, Brian all the time saying, you got to castle more, you got to castle more, and he just does not like castling. I mean, he plays King's Gambit, and he plays the Knight or two openings that are known for not castling. So, hey, we all have our own styles here, right? The bishop goes to b3, and now the knight came to f4 and queen to d2. And this is the problem here. Even though my bishop has this long diagonal that looks really nice and it is the most active, well, I really have no weaknesses that I can really target and and actually try to win it. For instance, this d6 pawn is very much overprotected. Even though the bishop looks nice here on f7, well, it's not really that big a threat. This knight's doing a great job keeping off my pieces off d5. I can't go to d4 and d3 is taken up. So it's really hard to even double your pieces to try and attack this d pawn. Oh gosh, can I attack the queen side over here? Again, it's very, very hard here. Everything's so solid. And thinking about opening the king side, well, you're just going to lose a pawn here too. So this is a very hard position. In fact, black is already better here. With that being said, well, hopefully you've read the quote be uh, below you. One with Josh Waitzkin saying, you must love waiting and you've got to be able to handle the pressure. Waiting is such an important feature in chess that, well, you've just got to be able to understand it and be able to time it. Already here, I knew I was already worse and if brian wants to he can slowly start positionally outplaying me there was one move that he missed that brings the game back into play let's see what happens here he played queen e7 i'm not too sure what he was planning here i mean it does defend the h4 pawn but again i would think just castling over here is is a, is a good enough idea and bringing your rook over here is going to be strong here too so queen e7 got played queen to f2 again i really have no active plan since i can't open up the king side i can't open up the center I'm going to try and put pressure on the D pawn and also try and attack these pawns over here. Again, this is just very hard because 
these pieces are doing a very good job defending and attacking. All right. King F8 got played. Again, castles here looks plenty of good to me just to save some tempos. But King F8 got played. Rook D2. And the idea here is to double up rooks against the D-pawn. It's mostly a pseudo attack as well. I can't really attack the D-pawn as long as these pieces are here to defend. King G7. Rook to D1. And now pawn B5. A perfect move in this position. If he did not play B5, then I was going to try and play something like Queen A7. But again, there's just no weaknesses for me to attack, so it's really hard to play this position. I basically just got to keep weighing around and look for any kind of opportunities in this game. B5 right on target. Queen F1. Here I was so desperate, I'm trying to look to play something like Pawn to C4, opening up the C file. This actually is a double-edged move, as it can make my king, king weak. But again, I'm just kind of waiting around and seeing what happens. Rook to b8 got played. A beautiful move. Here, the idea is to play a5, a4, maybe even b4 here. So he's not even letting me do that. And if I do try to play c4 now, well, he's more than happy to take. And now he's got the rook ready on the open b file. Oh, gosh. I don't know how I survived this one. And at this point, again, I'm just trying to make moves here. I played bishop d5. It's a simple one-move threat. And I was very surprised to see... Knight takes d5, and now I'm better. This knight was so much better than this bishop that by trading, well, I mean, I'm just going to be going into a better pawn structure, and this knight is no longer dominating my bishop, and my rooks can become active now. And also, once this knight moves away, I'll be able to open up the king side. I wasn't able to do it before because, well, the knight or the rook can now put pressure on it. Once the knight takes, whew, I felt so much better. The rest of the game was quite easy for me. I took on d5, pawn to b4, now we have plenty of ideas. I can put pressure on the D-pawn and also even maybe make a little bit of harassment on these queenside pawns. Again, I had nothing else before, but now that the knight's gone, so many squares are now mine. Queen D3, a nice little move here. Again, putting pressure on the D-pawn. on the uh, D -pawn. Rook B to B, uh, Rook B8 to B6. I mean, the rooks are definitely not well placed here. And now I set to work to attack multiple weaknesses. I have a king side weakness over here and a queen side weakness over here and even a, a center weakness over here. Which one do I do? I'm going to try and put pressure on all of them. Remember the two weaknesses principle. Keep trying to attack both uh, I, uh, both ideas and they can't use both all their pieces to navigate or defend both. So whenever they're trying to, to defend both, that's where weaknesses get made. All right, here we go. Queen e3. Pawn g5, and here the reason why g5 was played, which is just a losing move here, is because I was planning on going queen f2, pawn g3, and there's really nothing to stop that. All right. Um, there's even ideas about pawn f4 here, too. Again, I just want to open up the king side and give my rook some space. Well, Brian saw this and unfortunately played g5, trying to hold everything down. And now, well, now we can open up the king side. We just go queen f2, and he freaked out and played king f8. At this point, he is getting low on time, so... This is a very complicated position. So, you, you know, in complicated positions, you don't want to be low on time. And unfortunately, he just starts running with the king. And now I'm just able to open up the king side and just create a big advantage. Pawn g3. Pawn takes. Queen takes. King to e8. Definitely not the best move in the position. But with rook g1 coming, um, it's kind of hard to say what to play here. And you can play something like f6 as well. h4 gets even stronger. And after pawn takes, queen takes, you can see the open files here. The king will not last too long. Okay, so that's why he went ahead and just played the move of king to e8, realizing I got to get this king to the center. Even if these pawns do fall over here, at least my king is safe. And, well, although it may not be the best defense, it definitely makes the most sense because, well, you know, the, how much is the king worth everything? How much is the pawn worth? One, right? So definitely a good position as far as trying to survive. Rook g1 got played. The g5 pawn becomes very weak, and he just plays queen to c7. Again, if he does try to defend this pawn, with something like f6, h4 gets played, and, well, the game can end very fast here with something like pawn takes, queen g8 check. Ugh. If you try to play king to d7, rook g7 ends the game right away. Um, let's see if queen f8, she might be getting checkmated here pretty soon. Queen check, rook is coming down. Again, all variations end up the same way. This king is just too vulnerable. So, he went ahead and played queen c7, and these types of position, especially when I consider time, it's best not to go crazy. At this point, he's threatening c2. I can win on g5. Should I take it? Of course not. Maintain the tension and try to hold him off. Here, I just went ahead and played. Rook to d2. Just defending the pawn and not making any kind of crazy situations. Again, I can win this guy at my leisure, and I just want to keep moving forward and not make any weaknesses. Rook b5 was played. Makes sense to me. He wants to try and triple up the rooks here and create Alakine's gun to attack the c2 pawn. 
Now we have time to take, so I went ahead and took. And he got worried about the checks over here, as he should, and he played queen to e7. All right, here we go. Queen check, king to d7. If he did try to play something like queen to f8, I would definitely just come back here with queen h7, and then rook g8's an idea, and again, I'm going to be penetrating the position. So the king starts running, queen to h8. The idea here was thinking about trying to play rook to g8 here, and also maybe ideas about pushing the pawn in the future here. Rook c8, time to run. Queen h5, rook c5, and just a little cat and mouse game. Queen g4 check. Of course, if he tries to trade queens, I might trade, although I'm not too sure in this situation if I would have or not. He went ahead and just played king c7. And I think the idea is to try and get the king to this b6 square, b7, and these rooks and queen, he's hoping he can create some counterplay. All right, here we go. Rook d to g1, attacking the pawn. Pawn to a5 got played. Pawn to f4. I'm just trying to open up this game. I mean, of course, you could look about taking on d6. But again, I didn't like this because, well, this is a threat that just keeps keeps building. And I don't want to defuse the situation right away. That being said, this is still a very good move to play. All right, back to the game. f4, trying to open up as much lines as possible. Pawn to f6. Takes and takes. Pawn to h4. I have a pass pawn over here, so I'm saying, hey, I might just push my pass pawn over here. You know, pass pawns must be pushed. He played rook c6 to defend the pawn. And now I played rook d5 attacking the a5 pawn. Here he played what I was hoping he'd play. He played king to b6. And now I have a very strong move here. Queen to e2, threatening queen to b5 check. I think due to low time and maybe just not really understanding the, or really just not having a good position, he went ahead and just played rook takes on c2. What do you do here? Should we take the rook or go with queen b5 check or maybe even rook b5 check over here? Ah, simple chess. I just go ahead and play queen b5 check, king a7, queen takes a5 check, king b7, and rook b5 check. And at this point, well, he can pretty much resign. In fact, I'm not too sure if he did end up playing king c6 in this situation. But if king c6 gets played, um, you can go for the attack with rook b6 ideas, maybe even queen a6 ideas. I think you could win the queen here. Although, I would just keep it simple here and just play king takes c2 as... Well, a, a free rook's a free rook, and I don't like going into complications at this point. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this game. Remember, whenever you're in these kinds of situations, think about your time and try to and try to uh, hold and maintain the tension. It is a waiting game when you are in a worse position. Try not to make pawn moves and just try to keep bettering your pieces as much as you can. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you later.